Okay, this is section 9.3, and it's on prediction intervals and the coefficient of determination. Prediction intervals are very similar to confidence intervals, and the coefficient of determination is labeled R squared. So what I did is, uh, this is from the previous problem. It says, use the previous example's regression equation to predict the expected grade for a student with three absences. So using that data uh, that we have in here, uh, here's the number of absences, and here's the grade that students got on the, uh, the test. And we see that you know, the trend line is going downward here. As the number of absences increase, your grade decreases. And we got that regression line. Here's the slope, and here's the y-intercept. Well, now what we can do is use this equation to make predictions. For example, on this problem it said uh, predict the person's grade if they have three absences. Well, absences was your x variable right there. So we just substitute 3 in for x, and we would take 3 times this negative 3.9241, and then uh, add on 105.67. And that's how you would do it by hand. And sometimes you have to do this by hand if they just give you the equation. But if they give you data points, you can put them in, and you get that equation. And then there's a place right down below here where you can do forecasting. So if you wanted to know a person's grade with three absences, once you have the data points in there, just type in 3 for x, and their predicted grade on the test is a 93.89. Right below this is a place where you can do prediction intervals. You put in your confidence level right here, and we were told on this problem to get a 90% prediction interval for a, a final grade when a student has three absence. So we put in our three, we put in our 0.9 right here. Here's your margin of error for that particular number of absences uh, and this confidence level. And right here is your prediction interval. So that's right here, and we would say that I am 90% sure that a person with three absences is going to get a grade somewhere between an 83 to 104 on that test. And you could change the number of absences depending on the problem, and you could change the uh, prediction interval. Like if I would change this to a higher uh, confidence level, let's say 0.95, that margin of error will increase, causing this interval to increase. So now I could say I'm 95% sure with a uh, with a person that has three absences that they're going to get somewhere between an 80 to a 106.8 on the test. Now maybe they can't get higher than 100, but we know it's somewhere between 80 to this number. And uh, you'll see that this margin of error actually changes if you change the x value also. Like it may be less sure of results with higher number of absences. Let's say put a 10 in here once and watch what happens. Well, it actually decreased it a little bit. And now we have this uh, prediction interval for somebody that has 10 absences. You can also calculate an x value if you're given a y value. Like, for example, if we wanted to find out what, how many absences could a person have and still end up with an 80 on the test, you would put 80 in for y, and it will calculate the x value for you. So according to this data, you could end up with an 80, even though you missed 6.54 classes. Now, sometimes you may be just given an equation, and if you're just given an equation and you're given a y value, then you'd have to substitute that in for the y value and do a little bit of algebra here. So if your 80 is is y, if you have uh, 80 in for y, then you'd have to subtract off the 105, giving you like a negative 25.67, and then divide by both sides by a negative 3.9241, and you would get this value over here. And you'd have to use a calculator to do that bit of uh, number crunching if they didn't give you the data points. If they just give you the equation, you have to do it by calculator. But anyway, we get that a person could have up to 6.54 absences. The other topic in this section is your coefficient determination, which is called R squared. And we can see on this particular problem, our R squared value is 0.95. And what the R squared value actually tells you is it tells you the amount of variability in your data points that's been uh, accounted for by that x variable. So the, the amount of variability in these data points, you know, we can see that they're kind of spread out here. But they're not very far away from the line. So this x variable has a lot to do with the y variable. In fact, think of the r squared value as a percentage. So we can think of that as 95%. So in other words, 95% of the variability in your grade can be accounted for by the x variable, which is your number of absences. So Number of absences, according to this data, is a huge variable 
on a person's grade. It accounts for 95% of the reason why you get the grade that you get, according to this data. I mean, even if this was only 20%, it would be a huge variable, but being 95%, it, it really is a, a very important variable in a person's grade, according to this data. And that's what that R-squared value tells you. And we'll go on to section 9.4 in the next section.